Happy Easter from <laughs> Happy Easter from the Center for Spiritual Living here in Reading. I'm Reverend Mary Mitchell here with Reverend Sue and uh, with Damien and Dalton and, and Charlie and we're here to give you a service that is heart opening and spiritually felt this Easter morning. We are really glad to offer uh, some music to start the service off with and Dalton Fitzgerald has offered to do that. So we're ready for our opening song, Dalton. Morning, everybody. totally free to clap loudly for Dalton. We're really excited to have him here. Thank you. That's wonderful. A couple of announcements. Even though the office is officially closed, I'm here from 9 to 3, Monday through Thursday, answering the phones, picking up mail, and it was so cute. Thursday, two people knocked loudly and slipped a check in my hand when I opened the door, and 15 minutes later, someone else did. So we're really glad that people are thinking of us. Reverend Sue is doing her yoga class by way of Facebook. Last week, she even had someone from Hawaii join her class. So anyone who's listening, feel free to check in with Reverend Sue. On Thursdays, I'm doing the uh, Emerson's Essays uh, on Facebook Live, and we had a new person this week. And, and so if you're really missing classes or missing conversation with like-minded people, feel free to join us. Feel free to join us. Right now we have a contemplative reading by Damien, and then Reverend Sue will give her talk. And we're really um, grateful for Damien's expertise in setting up this studio here in the center. So Damien, if you'd like to come.
Good morning. Today's reading is a little story called Eartha's Children, an eco-myth by Yi Luisa Tish. She writes, all right, kids, pinching her third eye. They were fussing and calling each other ugly names. Stop it. She enjoyed a great sense of accomplishment in birthing such a beautiful variety of beings. It took several million years for them to learn that they all came from her, our mother. But now for some of these kids, they imagine themselves superior to her, other children, because of the silly things such as skin color, hair texture, the space between their legs. Try to behave now. The boys fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat, sometimes using clubs, knives, bows, and arrows. They built walls to separate themselves from each other. But just as quickly, they knocked down those walls with elephants, invaded each other's spaces on horseback, and stole away with the booty of war, spices, gold, and women trapped between the humps on a camel's back. Boys, you need to settle down out there. Oh, Mom, we're just playing a war game. She bit her lips and shook her head as flecks of copper fell from the curls of her nappy hair. I can't let boys drive me crazy. Those boys love to fight over their imaginary friends. Their battle cry rang in her ears. My God's bigger than your God. No, my God's bigger than yours. Can't y'all find something better to do? War zone is a tired old game. She told them, play nice now. So they harnessed the light of the sun and grew crops for barter and sale. They began to build roads and create machines that flew through the air and roamed the seas. At first, she was pleased that, she had, that they had learned to make these toys. But they felled the trees in the ancient forest and hunted her beautiful animals almost to extinction. Soon, their playthings produced a gray cloud of poison that filled the sky. The creatures in the ocean trapped in nets and plastic, cried out in pain. She too cried out. As they peered, pierced her body and drained the black blood from her veins. Aw, oh, mom, climate change ain't nothing. Who needs them icebergs anyway? She doubled over in pain in her belly and screamed out, shut up boy, she stomped off her feet, she stomped her feet, and that command sent an earthquake in motion. A volcano erupted, and a tsunami followed. I'm going to ask y'all one more time to put down those weapons and stop fussing. Only a few of them obeyed her request. She pondered the question, what will it take to make them change? At that moment, a crack in the calabash of the world around the equator. At that moment, a crack in the calabash of the world ran around the equator. She opened her mouth as a bit of matter rolled from her tongue and fell at her feet. She picked up the curious thing and examined it closely. The inscription read, The Crown of Change. She placed the crown upon her head, and a surge of power moved through her. Now hear this. I am your mother, your queen, your salvation. Go to your room, she commanded in a booming voice. The children were taken aback by the thunder in her voice. Get in there and clean up the mess you've made. Put away those weapons of mass destruction. Take out the trash of fear, hatred, and greed. 
Cover your faces and wash your hands. Go into silence, the stillness within. There you will find your birthright, your humanity, and my love. Do your homework, children. Practice humility and respect. She turned away from them with the crown half cocked on her head. The children stared back at her, afraid of what she would do next. She looked over her shoulder and lightning flashed in her eyes. Don't make me repeat myself. A chorus of voices answered in many languages. Yes, ma'am. It was obedience to this command that the children were saved. This was written in praise to Oya, queen of the winds of change. now join me in prayer. In this moment, I return to love. I return to the love of God for the universe, for all God's children. That includes you and me, everyone listening, everyone watching. I return to love because we know love is what changes this world. Love is what brings us together. We were created in love. Love is the driver in the universe. Love is the heartfelt glowing of our soul when we see each person in our lives, when we communicate with so many people during these times that are so challenging. When we return to love, we let go of fear. We let go of anxiety. We let go of worry. If we stay in the moment, this precious moment called the now, we are safe, we are secure, and we are supported by the infinite intelligence of the universe. So I give great thanks for this realization, for this remembrance in a time where we can be frustrated and we go back to the one, the return to the one who is pure love. I support myself with that every moment of every day. I support you with that recognition. Love is the answer and being in the present moment is the only moment there is. Thank you, God, and so it is. Good morning. I appreciate the uh, community that we have in this room, it's filling it with love, and I welcome all of you that are watching today. This talk is about being broken open, and this is also the week that is known in many traditions as the Holy Week. And a lot of us are conditioned in this, in our spiritual upbringing by the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection. And I would like to just give a, br a brush stroke to that and I'll invite you to just think about what that story means to you personally. As we look at it from a metaphysical point of view to understand the the profound story in itself and the the way of, of Jesus within that story and and how many Christians today are celebrating that deep love of the Christ but there are so many ways that this story penetrates all faith paths and all cultures so I wanted to look at it today in light of today's climate what's going on with each one of us through this um, new way of finding our self isolated because of the, the virus and taking care of one another. So when I look at the story, I, I reflect on the, the idea that um, we all have moments like, like when Jesus was walking and teaching, and many times we also have had moments where we are misunderstood, where we are scrutinized and we are taken um, hostage and by people's opinions, maybe not to uh, a real prison, so to speak, but we are taken into 
a place inside ourselves that feels dark and isolated and sad. And we feel that nobody cares for us in that space. And we, we shrink around in our experience. And there's something that Jesus said on the cross, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. The most important message I feel that the Bible contains in that moment of the offering of that message to our own self, to forgive ourself and all beings for those unskillful moments that we are with one another. So this is what I'm inviting us to right now, into that space. So we've been on the cross, so to speak. Um, we've been reviewing our life, and maybe we are uh, sorting out some of the things that we have been um, misinterpreted about, or we just feel like we're, we're lost and no one's understanding. We're sort of in that space right now, each one of us in, in an isolated state, having time to review a lot of these things of the self. And sometimes that can take us to very joyful places, but it can also take us to maybe the cave inside the heart where the sense of the shadow side comes to be more prominent. It's important. This time is important. This time of solitude is part of our journey, part of our spiritual journey, Part of, um, part of the answer to the prayer, we've all been, been longing for world peace and for a greater love and humanity and for our planet, for its resources to be renewed, for the protection of our animals and the waterways and the skies and the air. We've been praying for that. And, and then this is, how, this is how it's happening. And so we have great faith in a knowing that, that God knows the Divine Mother knows something great is happening here. And it's not without its suffering. It's not without its uh, moments of fear and sadness. But it's happening, and we're all a part of it. And we're co-creators with that as we examine our own consciousness. So this is where I'm inviting us to explore. Say now we're in the cave. Um, we're in that, that space of darkness, and the boulder has been... Um, put over the, the opening of the cave. That boulder's put over the opening of our heart. And so with that boulder, with that sense of resistance that's placed before our heart, are we really experiencing what we're supposed to right now in the evolution of our soul? Is this idea of self-isolation, is it bringing up for you some of your soul searching, some of the time that you've needed to spend with yourself to find your answers, to find your way. Because it's not going to come from anything outside of yourself. It's going to come from the still small voice within you where the divine, the love, is always whispering to you to call you home. So if the tomb is, is like this nature of, of isolation, a death of something, a misunderstanding along our way. Others have blamed you, doubted you, um, you've doubted yourself. Uh, we have placed ourselves here. And at first we might be stunned. I know we all were, I, I really feel like there was this stun when the, when the declaration came out to stay isolated. You know, it was, it was hard at first, like no more than 50 can gather. And then you kind of sat, wrestled with that a little bit. What does that mean? And then the six feet apart, and then no, no gatherings. When I was driving to church this morning, I passed two different churches, and I got my heart just got so touched watching the different pastors and ministers all dressed up in their greatest um, church attire, walking into their uh, place of worship, and that lot is empty. And I, I felt for them. And then I drove into this center's parking lot, opened the gates, and came into an empty building. And there's a different energy here. So we appreciate the opportunity to be able to connect this way, anyway, to keep our hearts open and to, to allow a message to be relayed to each other that, that is important at this time. So here we are, this first moment. And I know I was sort of stunned in a, in a disbelief that this isn't happening. 
And I was cautious in, in my willingness to accept that this is happening. Uh, I thought it was just in, in China, as horrific as it was there, I, I had a hard time wrapping my mind around what was coming our way as the storm moved um, across our planet. So I was watching it out there, way over there. And then it started to become very personal. It started disrupting our own patterns here. And we entered a field that William Bridges, in his work of trans, he has a, a work he calls Transitions. And he calls this, we entered the field of ending. And it identifies this in his model. He says, this is how we have collectively understood and maneuvered through personal and human side of change. But this ending, this is an ending where everything stopped. Everything stopped. The stock market stopped. Um, our ability to travel, our freedom stopped. Our ability to, to reach out to one another and embrace them in moments of, of grief and sadness, it stopped. And so all of our ways we're discovering, I don't know this. I don't have any tools for this. I don't know my way through this. And so we, we spent some time in that stunned state of being. How do we get stuff? And many, many people started to go to the stores and begin to, to hoard. Hoarding stores, store, uh, stories went rampant across Facebook and across the news. And you're just, uh, again, stunned. How is this happening? Why is this happening? What is going on? And then we enter a stage of that, after that initial blow of maybe we should start bargaining. And then we'll think, okay, I can do this for a few days. I can do anything for a few days. And then we start maybe a little touch of denial. No, this is not going to go on for a few months. We'll be big enough to, to close the center for a couple of weeks. And, and then Lori starts saying, well, we need to cancel this and that and uh, this this tsunami of, of all of our, of our events and our planning, and it was heartbreaking. One by one, we started marking things off the calendar, postponing and calling people that were lined up to be here. Uh, so much planning and practice for the Heart Song Choir to present their, their hearts and their music. They've been planning for, for weeks, and we had to cancel that. And it was just one thing after another. And it was hard not to almost want to get annoyed with each other. Like, I think that's your fault that we're canceling this. You know, it, it's just unreasonable moments. And I started to realize when in, in some of my annoyances of watching everything come to a stop, everything that we've worked on, I realized we really are being called to let go, to stop to let go and to stop. And any touchiness and sensitivity that was starting to emerge in feelings were important to pay attention to because we were starting to have more assumed conversations in our heads. And we were starting to, perhaps some of us, not everyone had this journey, but this was partly going into a dark night of the soul where are we? Where is, where is everybody? And, and how do we get through this? Well, the next stage that we start to move through is what he speaks to as the neutral zone, which is rather a, a creative place to be. And it's where I'm seeing many of us have wandered innocently into that place of, of the neutral zone. As Bridges explains it in these words, this is his model. He said, this is the interim spacious space. It's full of possibilities, creativity, and innovative ideas. Now, my, my children are musicians, and they do music lessons, and, and they found right away a way to connect to others through, through the Zoom platform, which many of us have. And they started to find their way with that and, and reach out, and, and they were able to teach, teach me a few of the tricks. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to reach back out to, to yoga. I'm going to reach back out. So we started having some, some meetings, some gatherings in safe space. And it became an opportunity to explore something so different in this new possibility, in this new realm of being. Because there is no normal. 
anymore. And the, the, the wisdom here is not to go back to what was normal, but to open up to something new, something very profound, and to never forget how, how important this time has been, how important this virus has been as a messenger to each and every one of us. So in a lot of our, our working into towards the neutral zone, Think about this, we were using our old consciousness. And isn't it been said many times, we cannot solve a problem from where the problem began. We need to lift our consciousness into this place of, of inspiration and newness and possibilities. And I'll speak more on that, but finally, finally, through these different stages, we awaken, and again, this is Bridges' work on transitions, we awaken into new beginnings, new understandings, new values, new attitudes, a release of energy into a whole new direction. And I think that's exciting. We resurrect and we're starting to enter into a new consciousness of all of that. Deepak says these words, the symbolic language of the crucifixion is the death of an old paradigm. Resurrection is a leap into a whole new way of thinking. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our philosophy in the Science of Mind text on 484, he writes, the, the spirit that raised Jesus dwells in all. This spirit quickens our mortal bodies when we let it. Here is a lesson in mental and spiritual healing as the truth dawns upon the subjective state of our thought, our, sub, our subconscious patterns, it stimulates it into newness of action. So this is about how we may have been holding this idea of the Christ within us hostage. Holding back just a little bit as we have moved through our temperaments through this, how we have recognized there's an influence of love happening here. But our hearts got bound up a little bit by our own personal suffering, our own holding of patterns that we were used to, of judgment. And we interpreted all of that, that others are doing this. Remember, it's, this, it's out there. This virus is out there, over there. But it's in here. It's in our hearts. And so black and white thinking that we can be comfortable with at times because it sets us on course, it's valuable, we start to question that. If we are mind-oriented in our solutions and in our philosophies, we tend to get totally caught up in thinking our way through this. We can also get caught up in a sort of a slothful way of moving through this because we, we no longer have a comfort zone and our inability to see all the amazing changes around us. We stay anchored to how it used to be, how it should be. And we try to almost force the puzzle pieces back in to the margins of something that has completely blown up all around us. So when I speak of this old consciousness that no longer serves us, we aren't, are we making um, an effort to really challenge that? And we can recognize when we're up against that, when, we're, when we've been triggered, when we return to an old script in this time of newness. We're trying to make others wrong and ourselves right, and you might be absolutely right. But this is a time to listen, to listen very carefully, to allow a new consciousness to, to elevate us all into seeing this potentiality here that we're experiencing. And you can recognize the opportunity here to be alert, to be sensitive to anything, to anything that is separating you, that is forcing that boulder over your heart. Because this whole opportunity is an opportunity of 
transformation of the self in such a way that the shadow moves away and only a lightness overcomes our being. Think about that. When the boulder was moved away and the, those that could recognize this new idea of the transformation of, of Jesus into that uh, eternal life, into that lightness of being, it was recognized by a few. The invitation here is, is just to be, just to be. We don't want our old ways to, to keep us as we were. Gary Zukoff, he points out, I read one of his writings through this, he said, he points out that giving birth to the way of the heart, that's what is happening here. In old consciousness, he says, this coronavirus is creating fear. You taste it when you experience fear, when you experience anger, jealousy, overwhelm, anxiety, when you run back to your addictive ways and you recognize all of that as an experience of fear, or when you're feeling superior or entitled during this time, or when you are feeling inferior and the need to please everyone in order to hang on to some part of what you knew yourself to be before the isolation. And when you fall into behaviors of obsessive, compulsive behaviors, these are all experiences of fear, but he reminds us, and we know this, so, this truth is so profound that what is greater than all of this is our consciousness contains love. And we recognize when we dwell in that space because we are filled with gratitude, patience, contentment, and awe, in awe of all that there is. Gary says this, in other words, from the perspective of the new consciousness. The coronavirus is an enormous and dramatic reflection of the enormous fear in our collective consciousness overall, through all the planet. The counterpart to this is an enormous love. And here's where I find my refuge. And I invite us all into this space, knowing that our collective consciousness also holds this vast love. That, that each time, that we reach towards another each time we open up each time we make a phone call how are you each time we wash our hands each time we don a mask we are caring for one another we are reaching out choosing love over fear reaching out to humanity to help or to connect so we join he says instead of separate we join instead of separate to explore his words to explore the goodness, the softness, the tenderness, experience the goodness, the softness, and the tenderness. When I set up the Zoom calls with the Yoga Friends community that um, I have shared so many years with, I am so fed at the very end by their exchanges of hellos and their waving at each other and their hearts reaching out to each other. I just leave that meeting. I hit the leave the meeting button and I feel myself just tear up with, with emotion of great love. How endearing it is to, to find a way, any way, to stay connected and to be in a community that is continually praying for the healing of all. So yeah, we are loving in a really big way here when we stay home. We are caring for one another in our well-being. We don't want to rush this. And again, we don't want to forget it. And so let me just take you back a little bit to the, that idea that I presented about being mind-oriented being. Now, where did I get that? I, all the reading that I've been doing, Luna and Soul have written a book called The Spiritual Awakening Process. And they have some beautiful writings. They remind us how important it is to our mind to have that logic thinking, but to solely rely on it, it can dominate us. And then we separate ourselves unknowingly. We categorize, conceptualize, and even though we think we are seeing things as they are, are we? Are we seeing morph through a narrowed lens? So 
If you're angry, suspicious, resentful, or fearful, that is an awakening to you that your heart is numb. We're no longer seeing others as expressions of divinity, but we're seeing others as being annoying and threatening, and our hearts are closing. And we are knee-deep, as they say, in the dark quagmires of illusion created by our thoughts. The moment, the moment our heart closes, the moment we disconnect from our true nature, from our soul, we can no longer find the courage in ourselves to be open and vulnerable. Instead, we put on a fearful mask, and it's suffocating us. Now, those are kind of dramatic words, those, but the point being, what they're, they're inviting us is to move into a sense of, of emptiness, to want to know more through this time period of isolation and habit changing, to stay optimistic, to stay in a, in a realm of seeking and being with your heart space. They have several heart opening practices that they encourage you through this time to experience. So I wanted to share a few of those. Practice one, spend the time in solitude and silence. And that means don't distract yourself with um, your computer or another book or a, a Netflix. Find the refuge in silence alone and to feel the divine speaking to you in the heart as it opens. Solitude is a space, they remind us, of honesty where true feelings arise. You won't know that unless you're still long enough. Another practice, comfort yourself. Find the simple and comforting words to say along the way to remind yourself that you are supported in the midst of pain and separation. Saying just small things over and over to yourself, it's okay, I, I can get through this, I'm not alone. Another practice, give yourself permission to feel, to really feel what is going on, to connect with the, the idea of the Divine Mother, the Holy Father, the Great Spirit, to, to really feel that in those practices, you're doing everything you can to melt into love itself, to breathe, this is another practice, breathe into pain to use the power of prayer, to embrace the feeling of being uncomfortable, to embrace the feeling of being vulnerable. It's okay to feel those moments. They're awkward at times, they're uncomfortable. I know at moments in my own isolation, I have um, buried my head in a pillow. I am missing, I wanted my grandbabies for so long, and I'm missing. I can just see them, thank God, through FaceTime, but I don't get to hold them in these precious little year, uh, months of their infancy. But I'm finding another way. I'm finding another way to find the beauty in everything, to continue to, to reach out to, to those that especially in our community, we're reaching out, calling you, checking on you. We invite you to call us, every practitioner, every board member, every minister here is right here at your beck and call to hold prayer, to, to sit with you, to, to dialogue about how you're doing. And in learning to be vulnerable, it's important to learn to cry if you need to. And I'll just leave it there. Their, their book is, you know, again, about the spiritual process of awakening. And if you feel that you are so driven by your mind and it's allowing you to feel that you're hardening to go to the heart space. So I'm going to take us into a, a meditation that allows us to, to stay centered in that and there is a beautiful saying from Walt Whitman in this that, that speaks to the ideas that I'm sharing with you. 
Let me just find right where that is here. Too many papers because it's in it's important to remember as we find our way to enter that temple of the heart in such a way that we know we're welcomed home Stephen Smith I can't find that um, quote from Walt Whitman so I'll share it another time but I do have this from Stephen Smith, who is our, one of our board members and sings in the choir. And he wrote some poetry on Good Friday, but I liked this. This resurrection of life is the gardener's creed, acted out with a deep faith, based not on beliefs, but rather a knowing beyond any doubt, a knowing as essential as the act of living. That spring returns, even in the depth of winter, driven inside by freezing winds, that knowing of spring is present. That, my friend, is real faith. So many moments of beauty are surfacing on our connection through the social network of, of Facebook. And that beauty is a prompt to remind us to, yes, go find your colored pencils again, find a way to sit in nature and listen to the birds singing to us, to just find our way and to settle into that deep knowing. Oh, I found Walt Whitman. The moment you stand up and claim your divinity, Christ is reborn within your heart. Buddha rejoices. Muhammad dances upon the mountaintop. Lao Tzu winks approvingly. And the promise of the tree of life is fulfilled. And I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own. And I know that the Spirit of God is the brother of my own. And that all men are born are also my brothers, and all women my sisters and lovers. Walt Whitman. So I want you to settle right now into, if I could have Dalton up to play some keyboard in the background, Mirabai Star, another wonderful poet, these are, this is her reflection of what we're going through right now. Many of us are accepting these extraordinary times of the COVID-19 pandemic as an invitation to turn inward and recalibrate our most fundamental beliefs and practices. We are stepping mindfully into the unknown with our hearts open to the suffering of the most vulnerable. We are willing to experience a conscious collapse of all we have taken for granted. It can feel like a dark night of the world, but we can rest in the mystery while lifting up in prayer that our collective being will be rendered new and that we will enter the transfigured world, bearing all the best of who are radiant and rested, rested, and ready to serve. The sacred feminine reminds us that we have always known that which uh, the patriarchy has conditioned us to forget. We belong to each other. Women, men, people of all genders, river and storm. May we continue to excavate and lift up the jewels of the feminine wisdom that at what one time were buried, that they may be the source of a radical renewal in these times. Let us rejoice in the opportunity that we share. So, you've been listening and your heart is open you have been released from the tomb of the heart into an understanding. Feel it as you close your eyes and see yourself just surrounded by rainbows and light, clarity and insight. There is only one, one powerful healing happening here. And we relax into that knowing. We settle the physical nature of our being. 
we release all ideas of fear and doubt. And we recognize there is a healing happening here. And we are each the spiritual warriors in this journey, finding our way and speaking our truth, finding our clarity. So we, we close the doors of our perception and we turn our awareness deeper into a place of spaciousness and serenity within. Can you feel it? It is as clear and as calm and as still as a cloudless sky. There is beauty here. There is clarity here. This is your own spiritual essence shining spaciousness of your own self, luminous and radiant as the sun. Any thoughts or emotions are like clouds passing over that sun and none of them are so dense that they cannot be dissolved by the radiant light of the one. Never forget, this radiant energy of light shines always through those clouds. And as we make our way into the new beginnings that are at the horizon, that we can feel and taste and pray for, and we can use our imaginal selves, just like the butterfly emerging, we create from that imagination, from that place of truth, a better world that works for all you to feel the sense of brilliance and warmth that holds you now. And in closing, hold that space and feel the sense of love and truth and healing. I will be sending out a beautiful meditation in the next update that has to do with the, a prayer of healing for the world. But let us know together there is a healing happening. There is a greater good unfolding. And that as we partnership with the divine and stay in touch with our heart, the light leads the way. So I give thanks for each one of you listening. For each one of you being willing to be vulnerable long enough to listen. We are in this together. this word, knowing that all is well, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Thank you, Reverend Sue, for a beautiful message and a reminder of the spiritual practices we can do each day to help us stay centered at this time. And we never end a service without an offertory. So I invite you to say after me our offertory affirmation. Gratefully, I give with an attitude of abundance. Gratefully, I give with an attitude of abundance. For I know as I give, I do receive. For I know as I give, I do receive. So knowing that we don't have ushers here at the moment, uh, feel free to put your check in the mail or to call in and give me your credit card number anything that you would like to contribute to this beautiful center because the expenses go on just like any business in, in the country today. And so uh, we like to end, we're going to end with a music by Dalton, but we like to end the service with you saying uh, again after me that there is only one life. There is only one life. And that life is God's life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is perfect. And that life is my life now. That life is my life now. All right, wherever you are, if you can stand up, take a deep breath. There is only one life. There is only one life. And that life is God's life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. That life is perfect. And that life is my life and your life now. That life is my life and your life now. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us on this Easter Sunday. And now Dalton will end this service with a beautiful piece of music he has planned for you. Mm -hmm.